So good evening, you absolute legends. Thank you so much for joining me. As I record this live for those people catching up on the replay, it is, what, four minutes past nine on Monday, the 20th of February, 2023. Um, I've only just started getting the year right. Has anyone else, is it just me, been right in 2022 still whenever they fill the date out on anything they've got to write by hand? I'm getting used to that now. We are well into 2023. Um, got loads to discuss tonight. So much is happening at the moment on actsonthis.tv. If you are a member... Uh, you know, a premium member of Acts on this.tv, you are in for an incredible, well, an incredible year, to be honest. But the next eight weeks, you know, that's, I normally work like eight weeks in advance uh, when we're booking guests to come on and do the live sessions every week. We've got some of the biggest casting directors in the game coming on, some of the biggest directors in TV, writers, producers, guests who have never, ever, ever been on Acts on this.tv before. Amazing guests who have been on, but not for two, three years are coming back to update their sessions. Um, it's going to be an incredible, incredible time. Um, and, and this year's already started off really, really well um, if you're not a member of the community if you want to kick the tires on acts on this.tv for one pound for seven days um, if you do it today actually you'll get you'll get access to tomorrow night's um, private zoom call with um, head of Hollyoaks casting Mr. Peter Hunt so I don't know when you're listening to this or watching this but um, if you get a one pound trial now you can join that that zoom for a quid absolute freaking bargain going to be an amazing session uh, if I go over to acts on this.tv now here is the website just going to recap on a couple of things that have been going on in the community over the last few weeks. Um, I released a podcast. I'm going to play a bit of this out tonight. Today, for any actor, and this will apply to most people. I can relate to this myself as well. We all want to be happier, right? Let's just be honest with ourselves. Life is freaking tough right now. It's difficult enough being an actor at the best of times. Being an actor right now, <laughs> with the global economy as it is, and just with all of the stresses and strains of life and a brand new year, it's pretty difficult. So I sat down two weeks ago in my kitchen with high-performance mindset coach, Mr. Matt Hall. He's a world record breaker, a great friend of mine. He's obsessed with mindset, qualified in many, many different scientific disciplines around mindset. He's not just a guy who's read a book by Tony Robbins and thinks he's a life coach. Really, really puts his money where his mouth is. And we sat in my kitchen for two and a half hours recording an incredible podcast that we put out today all about how to be a happier actor basically how to you know sort of like level up in this industry pursuing what it is that you want from it whilst not you know feeling like shit every other day um so i'm going to play a bit of that out tonight but that's a two and a half hour podcast in your members area right now if you remember um and then this was last week's session as well uh, we had ruth madeley and um, bafta nominated actress ruth madeley she's just been casting doctor who um you'll know her from loads and loads of incredible shows though like years and years um she did did um uh, what was the terry pratchett uh oh god what was it called the terry pratchett massive drama victor jenkins cast it um oh she's gonna kill me um she played an incredible character in that though that was brilliant um you'll have seen her in don't take my baby that was a job that i did with her uh, then barbara mcallen another job that i did with her um it's a couple of uh, you know great tv dramas but um she's just been cast as a character called shirley ann bingham in doctor who we don't know much about her character now um, but all will be revealed. But we had a really good chat with Ruth. Um, really about, I mean, all kinds of things, again, about sort of pursuing your career and being happier whilst you're on that pursuit. Um, but really owning who you are, you know, not apologizing for who you are, really understanding your unique selling points when it comes to promoting yourself and marketing yourself to this industry and to casting directors. Again, it's a really, you know, a really feel good session. Um, that's in your members area if you weren't for that live. So go and check that out. Anyone listening on the recording, you know, I know you can't see this if I'm on the website now, if you're listening on the recording of this, um, I'm just obviously showing these features over on the site, but go to actsonthis.tv. You can watch the previews of these sessions. And then me and Petch, the week before that, we sat, we, we sat down with members of the community and we we did a three-hour Q&A where we answered over 50 questions um, from members of the community. We covered absolutely everything on that. So there's just a few of the things that have been going on at on this. The week before that, we had Victor Jenkins on, incredibly massive casting director in TV. Just really, really big stuff. Um, and I'm going to play a little bit of that out tonight, but then I'm going to show you what's coming up. Tomorrow night, like I say, we've got Peter Hunt, Hollyoaks casting director, um, doing a private Zoom call with all our members. So that's going to be pretty cool. But if you missed the session with Ruth, here's just two minutes of what you missed, and I'm going to dive into one more clip from Ruth's session um, before looking at this podcast with Matt, because, um, yeah, I just think like this is you should watch this one. You should catch up on this if you've not seen it already. Her acting career is going from strength to strength right now. She's just been cast as Shirley Ann Bingham in Doctor Who. It's BAFTA nominated actress Ruth Madeley in the house. Yay! Ruth, you're back after two <laughs> years. How are you? I didn't have a traditional 
way into the industry at all. I did script writing. I never thought that my place would be in front of the camera. Perhaps if I if there'd been more disability representation, not just wheelchair users or physically disabled people, disability just across is, the board, just yeah. Across the board. Give us the the show you learned the most on out of that lot. Then Barbara met Alan. It was it was the first time I've been number one on the call sheet. So if you are watching on the day and you want to support us, don't phone. It hurts our feelings. Shirley Ann Bingham in Doctor Who. When Russell went back to the Doctor Who franchise and, and I messaged him and said, congratulations, I'm so happy for you. Um, he, we just had a few messages and he said, he said that disability representation was really important to him after working with me on years and years. How do you carry on when you're losing or have been losing the will to fight in this industry? For me, that is finding other things that I love. Reading, uh, writing, connecting with directors, reading other people's stuff, you know, mm. helping other people with auditions. Just the real bare bones honesty of taking a script and getting it seen by people who could potentially make it happen. It's about knowing the production company um, again, networking, networking, networking. What would be the best way you like learn your scripts? Do you have like any kind of like method to do it? What I'm going to tell you now sounds absolutely hideous and I hate doing it, but it really works. How do you develop your staying power in this industry when maybe the people closest to you, your friends, even your family think you should have gone and been a doctor? Every time you think that, oh my God, I don't know what I'm doing, there are like thousands of other actors around you who are feeling exactly the same. Boom, that's on this.tv. Get your membership if you want to unlock the full two and a half. I didn't realize it was a two and a half hour session with, with Ruth. And I've just seen Mr. Matt Hall is in the comments now. He's actually watching this live on Facebook. Matt, let us know if you, uh, if you are still there. I'm going to play out the trailer for our podcast in a minute, mate. Um, thanks for uh, thanks for being here. I know you do a, a, a Monday Night Live broadcast as well. Um, but yeah, we covered so much in that chat with Ruth. Honestly, like uh, everybody, just go you know go and watch that. And one thing that Ruth is amazing at, and she mentioned it a little bit in the clip there. And I know it's sort of like a bit of a buzzword, and people don't really get it. But networking, right? Ultimately, networking. People are like, oh, you know, oh god, it's you know, what is that? Is that that really sort of like awkward thing where you go to these networking nights and talk to people you don't know, and it's all really awkward, and you've got to have a drink? It's not. Don't look at networking as anything that's like scary. Ultimately, just look at you know, look at it as how can I have you know as many conversations as possible this week with people that I don't know in the industry, and that can be literally by going, look, I'm going to spend some time on Twitter. Um, and, you know, getting involved in conversations on there, not, you know, getting involved in political debates and arguments. That's not, that's Twitter is shit for that. Um, but it's an incredible place to hang out in the acting industry because so much goes down on there. So many, well, our, our entire industry is on there. All the casting directors in the business are practically uh, on Twitter. They're all putting out briefs, you know, you know, putting out shows they've worked on. You can learn so much about a casting director from their Twitter profile, their Instagram profile, that if you do then go to a networking event or you do bump into somebody at the theatre, and that's on this member voice note me the other day because they'd bumped into Sophie Holland, the huge casting director. She just, she just cast You, season four of You for Netflix. She cast The Witcher. Huge, huge stuff, um, Shadow and Bone. And bumped into uh, Sophie Holland at St Pancras. Now, she'd um, this, this member of Acts on This had watched and been live on one of our sessions with Sophie Holland. So I'd love to talk to Sophie about on the platform because she really knew her. So networking with Sophie was like, you know, like although she'd never met her before, was really easy because she'd done her research. She knew what Sophie was about. She knew what Sophie liked. Um, you know, obviously follow Sophie and her team on Twitter. Uh, but Ruth is the queen of networking and it's paid massive, massive, massive dividends in her career. Not transactionally, not just meeting people because they want, you know, she wants something out of them or anything like that. Genuinely adding value to people's lives in the industry and it's just paid dividends and dividends and dividends, um, you know, to, to help ultimately get her in rooms where, you know, where, where things can happen. So um, listen to that session. Let us know if you uh, if you were there live. If you're here, if you're here now and you were on that session live as well, let us know if uh, you know if you watched that. What you, your biggest takeaway was? Um, 
And uh, yeah, let us know um, if you can be joining us live tomorrow night as well. I can see Rich is here. Says, just want to give a massive shout out about another great uh, real cut from Chris Stone. We'll be sharing online over the next few days. Uh, Chris Stone is going to be back with us. Chris, in my opinion, is the best showreel producer in the UK. He's back with us for Showreel Surgery live on the 2nd of March. That's not next, not this Thursday. It's the Thursday after. Uh, I think. Um, I think it is, yeah. He, he will be back with us uh, there. So, uh, yeah, Rich, I saw your Super Bowl commercial, mate. <laughs> Rich, Super Bowl commercials, mate. I mean, you don't get bigger commercials than those. So, uh, congrats on that. I'm guessing he's, he's maybe cut some of that in your uh, in your reel. Uh, Meg said, I started networking at events uh, last year. and It's been amazing. Two jobs so far. I just met some lovely humans. Yeah, absolutely. It's not all about going, you know, I'm going to instantly get a job out of it. But the more people you know the higher the quality of the relationships you can form in life, not just this industry, like you, your entire success as a human being is very much predicated on the quality of your relationships. So if you can have conversations with people you don't know, like you're going to develop more of those relationships. So um, that's all That's all networking, uh, networking is. So I've got one more clip um, from Ruth's session before I, I dive into this podcast with Matt. Um, and, it, and it's linked, okay? This, this clip that I'm going to play now um, is, is, is about... Uh, ultimately you know things you can do to not feel like shit in this industry every other day and you saw in that in that trailer there Ruth spoke about you know finding other things that you enjoy and a lot of actors um they they always tell me that they don't enjoy anything else and it's like it doesn't have to be outside of this industry you know it just doesn't have to necessarily be acting because you can't act all the time so it's finding some other disciplines within this industry helping other actors out getting involved in showreel scenes for instance you know, short films, writing your own scripts. You know, I just find the happier actors are the ones who are not all in on waiting for the phone to ring and getting an audition or getting a self tape or something like that. So here's just a little clip, um, again from from this session with Ruth, just sort of like you know carrying on um, when times are hard. And I want to ask, actually, genuinely, whilst this is playing out, just leave me a comment if you're here live. Like, how are you? Matt asked me this question in this podcast, and if you go and watch the podcast in the members area, you'll hear my reply. Um, like, really, how are you? Like, genuinely, I'd love to know if, you, if people are happy to share. Like, start of a new week. How are you feeling right now? Like, honestly, how are you feeling? Because, and be really honest, good or bad doesn't matter because that's going to help me shape the future of the content that I create for Acts on this to really try and help, um, you know, you guys out. So the more honesty, the uh, the better, really. But yeah, let me know who, how you are. Now listen, who you are. Let me know who you are. And, uh, and here's a little tip from Ruth about, you know, carrying on when you feel a bit like shit. How do you carry on when you're losing or have been losing the will to fight in this industry? For me, that is finding other things that I love. Reading, uh, writing, connecting with directors, reading other people's stuff, you know, mm. helping other people with auditions. One of the things I've realised as, as, as my career's gone on is how important it is to have other things. I put off writing for a long time because I thought, oh, I'll come back to it when the acting dries up. And then I realised, you know what? What would help in the times when I'm not getting the jobs that I want or in a quieter period in my career is having something else that I know will keep my creativity alive and well and also um, allow you to connect with people who are in other areas of the industry. Not people who can get you jobs either. I don't mean just go, I, I mean like everybody in here, talk to each other. And I always say, create your own stuff. I've said this so much, so many times. So many things get made from people creating their own stuff. Yeah, and, and, not, and, no, not, and not sitting, waiting for things to happen. And don't be afraid to make things that you are passionate about. Don't worry about what you think the industry wants to see, you yeah. know, just, just don't worry about that. Write what you want to write and film what you want to film. There is nothing like this industry when it's good. So we have to find ways to keep going when it's not good. Once again, at's on this.tv, get a membership if you want to access the full two and a half hour chats um, and join us for sessions like that every single week. Like I say, Peter Hunt, head of Hollyoaks Casting, is going to be joining us tomorrow night, 7.30 p.m. live on Zoom for all members of at's on this.tv. I'm going to be playing some stuff out from Peter um, later on before we finish tonight as well. So that's just a couple of clips from Ruth 
ultimately like you know finding other things still to do with the industry um you know they don't have to be they could be things completely unrelated if you've got other uh, other interests other hobbies but for those actors who are like no this is all i want to do it's like this is what i'm born to do and like i can't do anything else and they get really sad thinking about doing anything else um I would see. I just really would advise people to find other things to do in this industry. Get involved in as many things as you can. Paid, unpaid, doesn't matter. Um, just to sort of take the pressure off yourself, hanging all of your fulfillment and self worth on your employment status. Because um, a lot of actors' identity is very much related to their employment status. They sometimes won't even dare say they're an actor when a stranger says, oh, what do you do then? If they, they know they can't follow that up with, oh, I'm just filming this job or I'm going to be on Coronation Street next week or whatever. They feel completely invalidated because they know that question, oh, what will I have seen you in is coming up next. And if you can't answer that with something, you feel like shit. Um, so, uh, you know, we, we, we want to stop wrapping our identity up around the employment status you know that that we are at right now because you're not going to be employed 100% of the time as an actor it's ridiculous unless like Ruth says there you employ yourself and the people I'm seeing the happiest right now are creating their own stuff you know even if that's really really just you know the most basic stuff in terms of you know you've got a decent self tape set up and you're just shooting little sketches or you know just like scenes from stuff and you're putting them on twitter or you're doing comedy stuff um Lawrence Russell is a you know Johnny Weldon Harry Tra- uh, Harry Travel Travaldwin I can never say his name um all great examples of people who do that on twitter on a weekly basis and get massive massive traction from it so um so yeah, let us know. Uh, let us know your thoughts on that. I can see lots of comments coming through on Facebook. So let's read a couple of those out and let me know. Yeah, like, as I said before that I played that clip. Let me know how you actually are, genuinely how you are right now. Steve says he needs to get out networking, meeting people again. Needs to get back involved. Um, Steve, you've had a baby, so you've had plenty of uh, excuse for for not getting out. I wouldn't I wouldn't beat yourself up about, about it, mate. But if you're in the in the position now to get yourself back out and about. Um, you're very good in public settings and meeting new people, mate, because you're very, uh, you know, you're quite extroverted, aren't you? So, um, yeah, get yourself get yourself back in the mix, D. Um, and we're also, folks, I've not booked it yet, so I'm really hoping, <laughs> hoping it's going to work out. Um, 4th of uh, March, Saturday, 4th of March, for all mem- uh, well, all acts on this TV folk, members, whatever, um, we've got our in-person meetups. So the Manchester meetup I'm running uh, on the 4th at 11 a.m. Um, at 53.2 in Manchester, as long as Simon will let me have the space. Um, and then uh, some of the acts on this crew down in London are hosting uh, the London event at the Ice Wharf in Camden. Um, really massive pub with like loads of spaces um, and like outdoor space and stuff as well. So um, get involved in that, Steve, if you're around. Uh, I know you're manchester base. Get yourself over to the meet up on the fourth get back involved in the uh in the community um let's have a look andrea says honestly she's not so so, so this is where i said how are you said not the best at the moment but i'm doing uh best to help anxiety but nothing to do with the acting um yeah well let, i mean let us know a little bit more about that uh, andrea what what causes that do you think um and maybe we can uh maybe we can help but i know you've got a lot going on with the film that you're creating so maybe you're just you know, maybe you just overworked and underpaid, Andrea, like all of us. <laughs> but be kind to yourself. Give yourself some uh, chill out time as well. Joe, oh, Joe says she's had a, she's had a bugger of a day. Went to Moorfields Hospital and the consultant wasn't there. But Joe, you said you've had a call with Matt Hall. Um, that was great. So um, so that's good. I'm going to play um, part of the podcast out from uh, mine and Matt's podcast in a minute. Um, Trio says, feels like, feel crap. Want to have more auditions, get seen even more. I know I need more new showreel stuff and voice reel stuff. Money is a massive worry at the moment. In situations like that, Trio, it's about, um, for me anyway, when, I, when I've experienced stuff like that, it's like going, right, okay, if I know I need stuff for my career, which does cost money. It just bloody does, doesn't it? We know it's expensive. Show real stuff, particularly to get done right, is worth spending money on because, in my experience, if you try and cut corners, you end up, you know, and you end up just hating the footage and you want to get it shot again and you're like, shit, why did I bother going to somebody cheap when I've now got to get it done again? And then that ends up just costing me more than it would have done if I'd have just got it done right in the first place. So for me, it's about, um, Really auditing, and this is harsh, right? Because I know right now stuff's just fucking expensive, isn't it? But really auditing where we're all spending money that we don't need to spend it. For me, one of the biggest, 
Like, you know what I'm like with coffee. One of the, one of the biggest wastes of money that I was I was experiencing was buying a latte every day from Starbucks or Costa because it doesn't seem that much money when it's like three fifty or something like that. It doesn't seem like a huge amount of money. But then when, when I was working out like over a month, I was like, holy shit, like I'm spending a hundred pounds a month on coffee. Well, more than that, um, just over a hundred quid a month on coffee. I'm like, that's absolutely insane when I can get an espresso machine on a subscription from Nespresso for like, I think it's it's literally like a pound for the machine because you have to get a subscription for a year where you buy like 15 quid of the pods a month or something like that. Um, and, I, and I went, okay, straight away there. I've just saved like 85 quid a month on coffee. Right, okay, so this feels much better. So if I just save up for three months, there you go, there's my showreels, my showreel scene done. You know, there's my headshots done or whatever. Spotify subscriptions, Netflix subscriptions, date nights, stuff that is instant gratification that we all want to say that we need. But I need that and I deserve it. I'm like, yeah, but on one hand, we can't be complaining that we feel like shit because we're getting nowhere when we're, you know, we're doing that. Um, I would see actors in the acts on this community, this is years ago, but I'd see people sometimes cancelling their memberships and then I'd look on their Instagram and I'd see them buying a round of tequila at the bar and I'm like, well, there's 30 quid. There's like, that was back when the membership to acts on this was a tenner a month. I'm like, there's three months membership. You've just spent literally in a round of drinks running away from your problems. Um, so as harsh as it sounds, we all, and I've had to do this recently because <laughs> electricity is stupidly expensive. Um I started going, where am I where am I throwing money away? Where am I wasting money? Um, and what am I, you know, what subscriptions have I got that actually are not contributing to my career at all? And I might just have to cancel them for three months. Peloton, you know what? Peloton, I had a Peloton subscription. Um, I've started using the gym again now. So I'm not working out as much at home. That was really expensive. That was like 30, 30 odd quid a month. Cancelled it. I was like, wow, that's just money that I was just throwing away. So we're all guilty of it. Um but yeah, I think right now, particularly with the way the way the the economy is, we've all got to be really savvy. Have a look on your direct debits and your bank. I was paying, I think, something like six quid a month for a phone insurance that I've not had the phone for three years. <laughs> like, I didn't even have the phone anymore, and yet the money it was only like six quid, but it was coming out my bank every month, and I didn't realise it was for something that I didn't even have anymore. So have a look at your direct debits and like what money you're just hemorrhaging and just leaking. Um, cause I think we can all be really, really, you know, sort of, uh, well, we're just guilty of that and just, you know, forgetful of things that we've set up. Um, charity donations I find are quite hard to get out of. <laughs> I'm a sucker for the people in the street who come over and make you sign up on the spot cause I'm just shit at saying no. Um, but I find like I was doing ones through text and it'd say, oh, your thing's going to come out tomorrow, but it wouldn't tell me how to like stop the, stop the donation. And I felt snide cause it was for charity, but I'm like, also right now charity begins at home a little bit. So um, have a look at like what everybody's, what you're all, what we're all spending money on, basically that we don't need, um, and just you know, just see where you can, uh, you can cut back. And if it's not possible because you're already as slim as you can, you know, on your on your accounts, you've cut all the all the faff off. Um, there's still stuff you can do for new showreel material trio, um, stuff like literally shooting um, cell tapes. You know, you wouldn't mix cell tape footage in with like professionally shot footage; it jars too much. But there's nothing wrong with you having a self tape. Uh, show reel three scenes you've got to make sure that each scene looks different not necessarily the background but at least you know what you're wearing is different so we know it's a different scene make them contrasting still to type you know very much on your casting type um but casting directors and agents are more than happy to see high quality self tapes um you know showing that you can act um there's way less to hide behind you know on a self tape so it's very obvious if someone you know someone's a good actor or not um so there's always stuff to do even when money is uh when money is tight um Let's have a look. Andrea says she's making her own film. Uh, she's got a first vlog out. Okay, nice one, Andrea. Yeah, we'll post post um, a link to it in the Facebook group if you've got a, uh, a vlog. Uh, definitely. Sarah's feeling great. Yes, Sarah. She's losing weight. Had an exciting audition for uh, from some new headshots. Staying away from bad habits that I used to do when I was down. Improving from the inside out. I love it. Yes, a little bit of positivity. Um, Sarah says, absolutely love the podcast with Matt. Um, right, okay, let's, let's before I dive into any more comments, let's play a little bit of this out and then we'll dive back into those comments there and have another chat. So this is available to all that's on this.tv members right now. I dropped this in the members area over the weekend actually, very quietly, but then the trailer and all the promos started for it today. It's a two and a half hour deep dive with high performance coach Mr. Matt Hall, literally about like how we can be happier in this industry because I'm seeing so many people struggling. Um, 
more than ever, there's almost like a epidemic of of just um, it's not depression because because that's a that's a really serious word. I'm not saying everybody's like clinically depressed, but there's a lot of sort of adversity people are facing in the acting industry right now, um, and I'm seeing people be down sort of down more than ever and these are people who i know are fucking good and i want to shake them and go come on if we can just sort this out sort your head out you know sort out what's between your ears get you some motivation back i know you're going to do really really well regardless of how many rejections you've had this year or last year it doesn't matter your past does not equal your future let's not get stuck in that bullshit game um you can literally start writing a new chapter for yourself now not even tomorrow people go oh it's a new day tomorrow clean slate it's a it's a new minute now clean slate now right now this minute so um this is the trailer it's only like a minute and a half long and i'll i'll, I'll jump into a little bit more conversation about this uh, when we come back but um i'd love you to watch this really would and we go deep on some real personal stuff as well it's not all about acting see adversity as the best chance to improve your life What do you see f***ing actors up right now? Blaming their agent, blaming the industry, blaming other actors. Pass the blame, you pass the power. If you get in a, a soap, you want to be in a drama. If you get in a drama, you want to be in a film. If you're getting your validation from things that are external like that, you will never, ever, ever feel enough. Is ambition itself a blessing or a curse? The answer is... There are some real fucking con artists in the acting industry just out to take 60 quid off 25 actors for some bullshit workshop that they know is going to take them nowhere. Do your research into this person. Are they who they say they are? Get testimonials. Sometimes you learn through getting shit wrong. How do you find something else that you love that is not acting? There is so much opportunity right now on TikTok, on social media, on YouTube shorts, Instagram reels, Facebook reels, and so on, that does not require you to get a yes from any casting director. Every day you can do something to change your life. What's the best piece of advice you've ever been given? <sighs> well, Boom! Honestly, it's a freaking good chat. I know the trailer's pretty dramatic. I'm trying to, uh, I'm trying to edit together, you know, some uh, some pretty compelling trailers. Now, let us know. Like, the, you know, we've only just started doing these multi-camera uh, podcasts. That's the second one that we've done. You guys get one of these a month, as well as the three live Zoom calls with the, you know, with the top guests. Um, as a member of Acts on This TV, but yeah, we're really trying to what production values this year offer real real depth real value um so let us know what you think of the new you know the new setup we're just shooting them literally in my kitchen but i think they look pretty good um but yeah it's a really really powerful chat that i love what matt says in the trailer there about passing the blame if you pass the blame you pass the power i've been about this for years where i'm like listen in a really positive way i've always looked at it if i'm not working as an actor and i mean it's really empowering this isn't me shitting on myself if i'm not working as an actor it is nobody else's fault but mine and i don't mean fault as in like i'm doing something wrong i just mean i'm not going to blame my agent i'm not going to blame the industry i'm not going to blame the prime minister you know politics whatever ultimately i'm going to stop pointing fingers at people i'm going to start putting thumbs back on myself and going right ross come on what more can you do today you know that's going to lead potentially to an opportunity that you wouldn't get you know if you didn't do that thing and that might literally be sending emails sending uh tweets linking in with people going to a networking event jumping on an event on zoom um doing a workshop i'll talk about workshops in a minute because there's some fucking rip off workshops out there right now some disgusting behavior you know in the workshop uh, sector of the acting industry right now, there's some brilliant workshops that are incredibly reasonably priced, incredibly reasonably, <laughs> I don't know if that's, if that's even a thing, are very reasonably priced, um, and they're run by very, very, you know, decent people. There's some absolute fucking jokers out there charging double what the Casting Arts Guild recommend people charge, not even, uh, not even telling the people who are going to do the workshops for them um, the price they're charging the actors who are going to go there um and it's just bad it's just bad bad behavior please do some real due diligence before you part with money in this industry and that that involves anyone who stumbled across this broadcast and they've never seen me before 
do some research on me. Go on imdb.com, type in Ross Grant, go and look at my Twitter, go and look at you know, the ads on this Facebook group. Look at what people are saying about ads on this on Twitter and social media and stuff like that. Don't give me any money before you, you know, you actually have done your research. Like, because it's just the right, it's just the right thing to do. Doing the right thing is always the right thing. But there are some unscrupulous people out to literally rip off desperate actors. So be careful. Um, but yeah, in terms of accountability, I think there's something really empowering about realizing that you are 100% in control of your life. Like sometimes if if we want to buy into the bullshit of the of, of the world and society, we convince ourselves that, you know, our success is based on ultimately at, at the mercy of powerful other people or chance. Now, of course, in the acting industry, there's a little bit of, you know, luck involved. Of course, there is. We never know what shows are going to be commissioned from week to week, for example. You know, whether a writer happens to have written a part that's, you know, got a character in it that you could play. There is luck involved in that. But there's so much that you have control over from writing your own parts and filming your own stuff, like Ruth was saying in that chat before. Really to just getting match fit and getting prepared to take the opportunity when it comes up. Because as cliched as it sounds, that's what right place, right time is. It's actually being prepared to take the opportunity when it presents itself. There are a lot of opportunities can come up for actors, but if you're not prepared to take it, then effectively you're you are in the you know the wrong place at the wrong time um that part is not luck there's so much you can do um to say it's to stay sharp and that's a big part of that podcast um there with matt but let us know if you've watched that um as i say i know there's a lot to take in this week and we've got another session tomorrow night so you might not be able to be there live you might have a lot of stuff to catch up on but um literally just pop some earphones in if you're if you're an ads on this member and you're like oh when am i going to sit down and watch all these videos you don't have to watch the videos i give everybody the audio only version so sometimes people want to cancel the membership because like i just don't have time to watch the videos i'm like you're just lying to yourself because across a week if you can find 90 minutes 15 minutes a day whilst you are walking the dog you're at the gym you're cleaning your teeth you're in the shower um literally get a get a, a mp3 player for your shower you can plug your phone into a waterproof one <laughs> or something i don't know how they work play it loud in the bathroom i don't know why are you on the loo if you can find 15 minutes a day and you just put earphones in you don't have to watch anything you can stay bang up to date with everything that's going on in the acting industry you can find out exactly what the biggest casting directors you know in the industry right now are working on who's in their teams their email addresses what they need from you how to get on their radars it's absolutely invaluable. And I'm like, my God, people, and it's six quid a week, but I'm like, people are just like so narrow, I don't know, sort of like tunnel vision on like, oh, I don't have time, I don't have time, I don't have time. Um, and I'm like, you definitely do. You just don't want it enough. You know, you're not taking accountability for your career. You're leaving it to chance because that's what you think, you know, is going to determine whether you work or not. What's going to determine whether you work or not is how much work you do on a daily basis to actually move your career forward, not your agent. They're looking after 80 people, 100 people, 150 people. Break that down over a week. It means your agent can maybe spend, what, 30 minutes a week? In an entire week, five minutes a day on you and your career. That's why they only get paid 15% of what you earn because you should be doing the other 85% of the work. But like, this is why like it's quite easy to get ahead of other actors if you put the hustle in ultimately um steve says his baby's watching um i'm helping get him to sleep <laughs> yes i hope i'm not boring him to sleep steve but uh but that's great is an act, act on this member of the future uh what's he what's he gonna be an uh, actor or a footballer steve let us know um let's have a look uh meg says right now i'm all gravy what does this what does this mean meg new agent who's been bloody fab and only been a month some great auditions normal day jobs are getting busier and booked a show real scene with chris about time and made some lovely new friends that i go to these events with nice i love it um that's wicked lolly how you doing says i'm totally new to it all where you are in the right place don't worry about that basically get stuck into uh any content on ads on this tv in the members area just use it like netflix just scroll through there's sessions in there with the best agents in the game, best casting directors, directors, writers, producers, headshot photographers, showreel producers, mindset coaches, literally everything you can think of. Voiceover, um, artists, voiceover agents, uh, everything you can do, uh, you, you, you know, there is to do with the TV industry and you know, being successful in it. The stuff in the members area so do get stuck in um sarah jane says these in-depth podcasts are amazing ross daniel edwards one blew my mind and then this one with matt got so much from both of them nice one sarah jane 
we've got some wicked ones coming up as well. What, what I love about the podcast is we can just get a bit more personal with them and we get a bit deeper. And I think once you've got somebody, you know, relaxed after an hour of chatting, they really open up about their life as well. And like, I think this industry, well, you know, this industry is like such a unique experience for every single human. It's different for all of us. And our experience of it is shaped very much by our previous experience of life, you know, good and bad. So to hear that perspective, you know, from Matt and his struggles, you know, he opens up a lot about, you know, struggles with bulimia and a bodybuilding show. Um, you know, we talk about relationships, intimate relationships, breakups, um, you know, things that's, that will affect your career. You know, that was a big part of this podcast with Matt was how do you stop your personal adversity? Um, we both had breakups recently. We both broke up with our girlfriends Um in the last sort of like, you know, couple of months. We're talking about that, like how do you stop personal adversity in your life derailing your professional life? Because when you're an actor, it's intrinsically linked. Even when you're not an actor, you know, your personal life is going to affect your performance at work. Of course it is. But when, you know, your tools of the trade are your emotions and your personal emotions might be in absolute turmoil, how do you switch those off, go into a room and actually take on a character's emotions and really be in control of those? It's a real, like, it's a very unique job, isn't it? being an actor it really really is so that's what i love about the podcast where you really get people to open up and and talk about their challenges and then we all realize that no matter how successful we perceive somebody you know on twitter or they've got a bafta or an oscar it's it doesn't mean that they're happy all the time and that suddenly just because you win an award look at all the people who won baftas literally last night they didn't wake up this morning and all their problems have disappeared you know like all of the problems, I would, I would say nine out of ten of the problems they had yesterday are still going to be there. Um, you know, winning a BAFTA will bring with it new problems, you know, hopefully higher quality problems, but you're never going to live a problem-free life. Um, so I think hearing about that is um, it's just reassuring, isn't it, that, you know, that everybody's going through it. Everybody's, you know, going through something. Um, so... Uh, so yeah, I'm going to be bringing you lots more of uh, lots more of those uh, podcasts over the next year. Uh, let's see what else is going down in the chat. Uh, let's have a look. Uh, I'm pro who's saying the proactive here. Uh, da, 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 da. I can't miss the comments. Somebody said about somebody said something about being proactive, but maybe what feeling that it's never enough. Because sometimes yeah, that you've got to. Um, You've 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 got to sort of get that balance is such a difficult thing, isn't it? Balance is a word that I think screws people up because people expect to have balance on like a daily basis or a weekly basis. And my experience of like work life balance and hustling in this industry is that the balance really sort of falls more across like an entire year. So you might go two months where you feel so you're working so hard at something. Maybe you're creating your own thing, you're writing your own thing, you're shooting your own thing. I don't know, or you're on a job if you're lucky enough to be in a play for two months or a, you know, you're on a TV job for two months or whatever. And then you might end up getting to the point, I've had it so many times where you really feel burnt out, like enough is enough. And you're like, where's the balance? Where's the balance? But then you might have like a month where you can sit back a little bit. It's very hard for me running acts on this.tv to ever sit back. <laughs> Hence has been here at nearly 10 o'clock on a Monday night. But I try and seek that balance, yeah, across a much larger span. I sometimes think people can beat themselves up if they're like, oh, you know, like I, all I've done this week is work. I'm like, sometimes that's just required and that's just the way that life is. Um, so sometimes you can feel like, you know, you're putting loads and loads of work in and sometimes you can feel like you're not getting anything out of that. You know, if you're sending loads of emails to casting directors and you feel like burnt out, then what can happen is you can have a couple of weeks off to recover and then, those seeds that you sowed last month, the month before, three months ago, whatever, they can sprout at any time. So I think you know, everybody who sort of like feels that they're doing everything and stuff's not really happening and they're like, oh my God, I could be doing more. Sometimes there's like, you know, if you really are, you know when you're putting the effort in. If you're really putting the effort in and you're not just sending two emails once on a Tuesday every other month, um, you can sort of like, you do deserve a little bit of time to sort of like rejuvenate, look after yourself, put your own oxygen mask back on before you, uh, you know, before you uh, you go again. But I think looking for balance is really, really hard when you try to look at it across a day or a week, even a month. Like, I think honestly, it's sort of like for me, I just like, right, <laughs> has my year been balanced? <laughs> Have I had, you know, some nice times? I've been on, on a holiday once or something like that, you know, as opposed to just standing in front of this this uh, this desk all the time. Louise says, I'm a new member, so I'm feeling quite hopeful that I will, will learn lots over the next couple of months. Louise, I can guarantee you, 
you don't need to feel quite hopeful. You can feel 100% absolutely guaranteed, nailed on that you are going to learn an incredible amount of stuff as a member of ActsOnThis.tv over the next few months. Um, I'm going to play in a second, actually. Let me just show you what's coming up because I'm going to play a trailer for tomorrow night. So over the next three weeks, uh, we've got some wicked sessions coming up. So tomorrow night, Mr. Peter Hunt, head of Hollyoaks Casting, is going to be joining us for what I'm going to make an absolute definitive session on how to land auditions and hopefully roles at Hollyoaks. And we'll get, we're going to cover literally everything. Peter's been on a few times, but I want to... Um, I want to take down some of the older features with Peter in the members area and I want to replace it with an absolute definitive once and for all, at least for like, you know the next year or so, session on landing auditions for Hollyoaks. We're going to cover everything from who's in Peter's team, the casting assistants, the casting associates, the casting directors Peter works with, um, exactly what they need from you when it comes to headshots, showreels, emailing them, exactly how to write a compelling email that Peter actually is looking forward to opening rather than spamming him with stuff that's just not useful, scenes you should have on your showreel if you want to work in serial drama because, you know, sending Peter, I don't know, some sort of like sci-fi space odyssey style movie scene might look great on your reel, but it's probably not that applicable for Hollyoaks. So it's like, is that useful for Peter or should we be shooting stuff that is actually more in line with the show? Week after that, we've got Mr. Chris Stone, in my opinion, like I said before, the best showreel producer in the UK, um, coming on to do showreel surgery. We're going to be playing out five members' showreels. We're going to be critiquing them, going through a seven-step formula for how you can guarantee your showreel is, is absolutely, you know, popping, is like the best it can be. Um, week after that, we've got uh, Coronation Street director, Mr. Jason Wingard, an award-winning director who's moved into serial drama now. Uh, he's currently uh, on The Cobbles, directing Corey. Going to be looking at how you can get on his his casting radar, what he needs from you on set so that you will get asked back. Um, all kinds of, uh, of of questions with Jason, just on, on, you know, sort of getting your foot in the door when it comes to um, Coronation Street, ultimately, and networking with directors because they're just as important as directors because for the day player roles, uh, just as important as casting directors, because for the day player roles, they often, you know, they can invite in who they want to audition for those roles. Not regulars, you know, but Jason ultimately will be giving the jobs away to the day players who come in to play the nurse for the episode or, you know, the receptionist or the waitress who's got five lines, ten lines or whatever. Um, so we're going to be talking to Jason about that. They're just three sessions. We've got more planned. I don't want to spoil any surprises for you. Um, obviously, we do this every single week. So the next three that are coming up. But tomorrow night is going to be wicked with Peter. We're going to make it, as I say, the... Um, just like a real, real, no bullshit, no nonsense um, session where we just cover all the questions that a lot of actors are just too scared to ask. I've known Peter for years, so I can ask anything. And speaking of that, here's a little, uh, a little word from Peter um, for those people who uh, who want to join us. This is 7:30 p.m. tomorrow on Zoom, just for members of Acts on This TV. If you want to get a membership actonlist.tv forward slash live you can go and get membership right now join us for all of these sessions and get access to the full archive of every single session we've done over the last two years in the members area right now is a word from peter actors if you are looking to audition for and potentially land a role on hollyoaks this year you better listen up i want to invite you to our next actonlist.tv live mastermind session it is taking place on tuesday the 21st of february at 7 30 p.m on zoom with this incredible guy here head of hollyoaks casting it's casting director mr peter hunt peter it's amazing to have you back as always what are we covering on tuesday night Ooh, um, I guess um, lots of new things, how the industry has continued to kind of change, how uh, our way of working is changing, and we're going back to more 50% in the room, 50% takes, giving that choice over to the actors to take some ownership of what kind of works best for them, and how sometimes emails do land on desks at the right time. Um, we're seeing someone at the moment down for a new regular that I was jogged off from an email, so sometimes those, uh, those emails do land well. They do. I'm always, always telling actors to reach out to cast directors. Honestly, I'm going to, uh, going to love hearing about that. Actors, if you want to get involved in this, you want to potentially jump on camera, have a little one-to-one -one with Peter as well, ask a question, anything we can do to help you move your acting career forward faster, get yourself over right now to actonlist.tv forward slash live for full details of this session. And every session, we do this every single week with the biggest casting directors, agents, actors, writers, producers, the best people in telly, Peter, basically, including yourself, <laughs> obviously. And now you, you're used to this. You've done these before. I ask everybody this, why don't actors want to miss this session in particular? Oh, uh, this is a tricky one, but I'm going to say, uh, what, 
what we do best, have a good gossip and forget that everybody's there and probably say too many home truths. But uh, let's, for some real talk and something that you can actually really apply going forward in the next few months. I love it. And honestly, we will have some gossip. We'll probably have to, <laughs> probably have to like hold back a little bit. But yeah. be there. Act on this. TV forward slash live. <laughs> That's on this.tv forward slash live. If you want to get your membership, join us for that session. We will have some gossip as well. We love a good gossip, uh, me and Peter. But yeah, lots lots to gossip on. Um, so it's just going to be a really, really, really incredible session. Um, Claire says, totally new here. I'm wondering if you do anything that covers kids in the acting. My daughter's so keen to get involved. We live in Cornwall, so there doesn't seem to be much around here. Don't know where to start. Claire, we've got loads. So we don't cover kids stuff but like as in specifically because it's not that much different from the adult stuff, to be honest with you. The way you market yourself as a child actor is very, very, very similar to how you'd market yourself as an adult actor as well. There's a little, there's some, some little differences around just legalities of kids working, having to have a chaperone, getting licensing from your local borough council, all that sort of stuff. Uh, that's generally dealt with by production. That's nothing you need to worry about. Um, we got a lot of parents of kids and you know child actors in the Acts on This TV community, and the parents watch the sessions with the guests that we have because you know they want to know sort of how to navigate their kids' career. Uh, depending on the age of the child, I mean, sometimes you know we've got we've got child actors who are like 14, 15, 16. They'll watch the sessions with their parents as well. They've got a bit more, you know, a bit more sort of. Um, leverage over their own career um, as well but we have got quite a lot of, of parents in the community who watch the sessions as well so by all means you know if you grab a membership you can join all the sessions and then you know you will find out exactly how these offices work how casting directors you know operate what they require when it comes to showreels headshots um, you know reaching out cold via email doing it the right way um, agents signing with agents um, it's not that much different ultimately like it, you know so we don't we don't do sessions specifically tailored for kids um but you know if you want to watch on you know on behalf of your child and and you know it'll give you ideas of how to steer their career um then by all means do that we've got loads of loads of uh you know loads of parents who do that and um, trio says yeah so the trial trio if you want to get a trial um that's on this on tv forward slash trial um you can get seven days access to the site for a quid if you cancel um nothing will happen if you can cancel it within seven days you don't have to carry on your membership if you don't cancel cancel it will turn into a full membership it's still only six quid a week though um most people in this industry charge you 30 quid minimum for like a two-hour workshop i give you seven a month with the biggest names as well that casting directors who don't even do workshops anywhere else for 24 quid so it's like you know literally it, i'm so proud of it. it's the best the best value membership in the entire industry don't pay anybody. I've seen a, a certain service provider charging £60 for a workshop. And I believe they cancelled, the guest cancelled on a workshop they did recently. I think probably because they found out how much they were charging, if I'm going to be completely honest. Um, and then there was, there was actors who were like, oh, I want a refund. And they wouldn't give refunds. Because they they they'd got somebody else in who wasn't even a casting director, who's a brilliant person actually. I really like this person. I've had him on acts on this, but they aren't a casting director. So if I'd booked to see a casting director and they, that casting director pulled out, and then the provider just brought someone else in who was not a casting director, I'd be like, I want my money back. And I know a lot of actors because we had at least three or four of them in our community who asked for a refund and, and were denied a refund. That's bullshit. Anybody wants a refund on acts on this? So many members forget to cancel the membership. And like the day that the money goes out, because it's an automatic, you know, subscription, like a direct debit, they'll message me and they'll be like, oh my God, I can't believe it. I didn't cancel. Technically, the terms and conditions, they've, they've, they've ticked a box on the checkout page to is I will give you three days notice if I want to cancel. But if people like really don't want to give me their money because they're like, I didn't mean to pay this. I just give them a refund instantly. I'm not going to argue with them about terms and conditions or anything like that, because I'm like, it's just being a good human being. It's just the right thing to do, you know? Like, anyone who's been around this community a while and has ever been in that situation will know that I will just honor stuff like that because I'm just like, you know, I only want to take funds from people who want to get involved in this community and want to give, you know, give their money to us, ultimately. Um, and it's incredible value they receive in return. But um, but to not give a refund when you've asked for one is bullshit. I'm like, it's really not... It's not cricket that. So just be careful who you're booking workshop with. With look at the terms and conditions and look at their past, you know, history. 
Um, and anybody, there's nobody who's worth 60 quid to do a two-hour workshop with. And anybody in the Casting Directors Guild would not do that because the Casting Directors Guild guidelines, although they don't have a set price, um, you know, most of them are like, look, 30, most Casting Directors I, I speak to are like, yeah, 30, 35 quid is the tops you should be paying. 60 quid, I'm like, I've seen something like 100 for like a three-hour workshop. I'm like, this is ridiculous. So um, just be careful uh, when it comes to giving money to people in this in this industry because there are some sharks um terry says are you planning on inviting matt shepherd yes terry me and matt have spoken um lots of times actually matt saw me uh for a show a big show last year actually i didn't get the part unfortunately um but um he's he left that office that he was working at i don't know exactly what he's doing in terms of setting up on his own or whether he's working with somebody else um but we spoke and matt will definitely come on and do a uh, and do a session at some point um chris says is it an open casting no this so we don't so none of the stuff on acts on this tv is auditions every zoom session we hold each week is purely a um like a platform for figuring this industry out you know we bring a casting director on and we dive deep into their their practices how their office operates who's in their office how you get on their casting radar what you need to do ultimately to be seen for auditions for the shows that they cast so nothing is an audition it's all just teaching the business of this business the critical part that no one else is teaching you know i went to one of the best drama schools in the country i came out for four years did absolutely nothing because I got everything wrong, because we were taught how to act, but we weren't taught about the business of the business. No one is teaching you how to earn money out of your talent. It's ridiculous. That's what Acts on List does. That's why I set it up. Um, but so, yeah, it's not not an audition. Uh, let's have a look. Uh, Joe says, any update on the workshop idea you had to run your own? So, yeah, so what I wanted to do, I wanted to disrupt the workshop industry this year because I thought it was so full of shit. I, I saw people, well, a few people. I see, I see lots of good workshops, by the way. Just Add Milk are fantastic. They, they, crazy name, I don't know where it comes from. They do some really good workshops with really good people at a really reasonable price. There are others you know, who do good stuff as well. I don't, you know, know all of them, obviously, so I, c I can only promote what I know. Um, but they're like 30 quid with really good names. It just annoys me when I see, like, double that and just stuff that I think is just bad, bad practices. So I wanted to disrupt that industry this year. And I was get, I was talking to Daniel Edwards, who's a casting director who never does workshops. Daniel is the co-casting director of Line of Duty, the casting director for Netflix's Heartstopper, ITV's upcoming uh, medical drama, malpractice, just the biggest stuff, biggest, biggest stuff in TV, really. And me and Daniel sat in my kitchen and we were like, right, should we just do some workshops for free? And we're going to try and get a sponsor to help, you know, ultimately cover the cost of the workshops. And we're going to do for Acts on This members, it would only be for Acts on This.tv members. Um, but we're going to look at doing some workshops that are really useful as well. And they would be full days. They're not going to be two hour bullshit. It's going to be like full days. Um, you know, where we get people, um, you know, really up on their feet working scripts in an audition environment. Um, and, you know, having somebody like Daniel there just be absolutely invaluable. So I don't know when they're going to be, Joanne. They'd probably be later this year, but we definitely want to do a couple um, just to show people that it can be done. Like, you know, you don't have to charge the earth to do decent workshops. Reed, how are you doing? Says, I hope you're well. Just notice you talk really fast. You should do those super fast radio commercials. I do talk quick. It's because I know it's nearly 10 o'clock and I'm like, <laughs> I um, I try to cram it all in, mate. Paul, how are you doing? It says, after the seven-day trial, can I just email you to do the annual subscription? Yes. So, Paul, what you would do, mate, if you want to do annual, email me before the seven days. So, email me like, I don't know, on day four or five, just to give us a bit of notice. Um, I will send you a link and you can you can complete the checkout on day six and it will cancel automatically your trial and just put you on annual. Um, if you get an annual membership, by the way, guys, it's 20 quid a month. Like, it's, you know, it, you will save like 50 quid um, a year on your membership. And you also get access to something that's absolutely invaluable if I take you over to the site that's taken us 100 hours to produce. Um, it's called the, uh, the Ultimate Contacts Database, which is this. So many actors struggle with their outreach to agents and casting directors and casting assistants and casting associates because they just have no idea who they are, what they cast and what their email address is and what their Twitter is and their IMDb pages and their spotlight pages. Every month we update this. It's taken us 100 hours so far. And this is ultimately a, uh, a list of every single agent, casting director, casting assistant and casting associate. Bang up to date. It was just updated on the 6th of January. So it's due an update probably the end of this month. Um and it's got the contact details of every single person 
in the industry. If I look at the agents one very, very quickly, I don't want to uh, give all the, give all this away. You can see all the agents, all tiered. I'm going to keep moving it so it's blurred. <laughs> tiered order, north, um, south, London, Ireland, Scotland, Wales, all of these, um, you know, all of these. Uh, oh, I've not even, oh yeah, I've got it. Like I said, no, I've not even put it on my screen there. Um, all of their names, their email addresses for the agencies, um, their Twitter handles, etc. What their their tier, if they're an agent, what tier they're at in terms of whether they're top tier, middle tier, lower middle tier. Um, you get that for free. It, if you whatever you get paid an hour, times it by a hundred, and that's how much it would cost you of your own time to create that database. Um, so you get that for free, Paul. If you if you get an annual membership, that's only for annual members. We'll never sell that separately. Uh, a lot of people ask us to. I just won't. It's a reward for people who commit to this community for 12 months. Um, if you do that, obviously you save 50 pounds anyway on what it would cost you to be a monthly member. It's just a no brainer, an absolute no brainer. Um, but yeah, you can do that. Uh, you can do that, Paul. You can go annual if you just email me during that seven day trial. Or if you just know you want to go annual, just go annual. Um, but we can sort that out for you, definitely. Uh, let's have a look. Trio says money is so tight right now, so it's either acts on this or Mandy. Trio, it's acts on this. It's acts on this. You'll learn so much more. Like, just in terms of taking control of your career, you can get so many opportunities on your own when you understand this industry as opposed to waiting for random things coming up on Mandy. Um, the quality of the castings on there just isn't great, to be honest. Um, but totally up to you. Not going to, you know, no no pressure either way. Um, let's have a look. Workshops sound great, says Reed. <laughs> Meg says as well. I want to do them, honestly. I really want to do them. I want to do them cheap. And I want to do them better than anybody else just to prove there's so many charlatans in this industry. You know, when you think like what you get for ads on this membership, six quid for a week, you know, for 24 quid a month, you get one, two and a half hour in-depth podcast with a top guest. You get three, two hour um, Zoom sessions with top guests, the biggest cast directors, agents, actors, writers, producers in the game. You get two rapid fire Friday group coaching calls and you get a monthly networking event as well for 24 quid. There's not another workshop, literally, there's nobody does one workshop for 24 quid. Nobody. Even Just Add Milk. They're at least, I think, 30 quid a workshop or whatever. I'll give you seven for 24 quid, and they're just with better people. So, <laughs> just it's just cheap. Just cheap. And I just want to I want to show people up even more this year by giving you guys even more uh, even more value. Liz, Liz, Liz has just gone straight to the point. She says, Mandy's bobbins, don't bother. <laughs> Cheers, Liz. Um... Raya says, run it, it's shouting, do good ones. Yeah, I don't know enough about them. But I know run it, it's shouting, um, for, from what I see of them, are very good intent. You know, I think that they're, they're quite ethical with the way they market themselves. Good guests, um, you know, good workshops. So um, I don't know what they charge, to be honest with you. But that's something else that um, would be, you know, would be worth looking at, definitely. So uh, cheers, Raya. And, and like I say, you know, I'm not slagging off the workshop industry. There's some freaking brilliant ones. I'm just slagging off some people as in every industry there are people who are just out to make money as simple as that you know really really simple some profess as well that they're doing stuff and money's going to charity i would love to see receipts of how much they're actually donating to charity from these workshops because i bet i bet the percentage is minuscule um but they will you know print a banner out with a few good looking charities on and, and people think oh it's all for charity no it's not it really isn't i'm sure it isn't just sure it isn't so uh so yeah i'd love i'd love to see <laughs> behind the scenes of some of them and see actually how much they do give away um mandy's pants in my opinion says raya bloody hell people are attacking mandy tonight mandy do better who is mandy i wonder who, who mandy was named after bless her i <laughs> don't know if that's the thing it might not be anything to do with somebody called Mandy. Um, let's have a look. Uh, da, 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 da. Uh, Lolly, if you're asking about Chris Stone showreels, um, go to chrisstoneshowreels.com or dive into the members area at's on this and every quarter we do a showreel surgery with Chris. Oh, hang on. Hang on a minute. My internet's gone. My internet's gone. One sec. That won't affect the people on the replay. Getting back on the internet. One second. Stay where you are, folks. Stay where you are. I'm a back. I'm not back just yet. Come on. Come on. I'm just waiting for my internet connection to get more stable. <laughs> Sorry, replay folks. You have to just bear with me whilst I try to get uh, 
try and get connected. Oh, come on. I think it's saying it's cut, cutting me off. Come on. Waiting for live signal. You should have one. You should have one. Come on, Internet. What's happening? Internet, come back. I'm a back, folks. I think I might be back. I don't know what happened there. It all just cut off. I think I should be back. Yes. <laughs> I don't know what happened there. Facebook just literally had a tantrum and nearly nearly shut my laptop down. I think it was having some issues. Let me know if I'm back, though. I think it, it knew I was going off on a salty rant. And I don't know where it uh, where it cut off on. Um, but no, it, it wasn't just you, Indra. It was everybody. It was me as well. Well, I think I'm back. But before I go again, we should probably wrap this up. But yeah, ultimately, the moral, moral of the story there is just basically um, just be careful when it comes to workshops and stuff. Just do your research. Uh, let's have a look. De uh, Ryan says, if you've been a monthly subscriber for more than a year, do you get the... Ca get the Casanova's list asking for those and myself who would love to have a resource like that. No, so so what so what it is is it's just for people who commit to a year up front. So you can choose to pay, you know, your twenty four quid a month if you want, or if you commit to a year all at once, you get the um, you know you get the Casanova's list for free. Um, ultimately, it's not something that you could just add up and say, you know, I've like you've you've paid X amount, you know, for a year or whatever. Um, it is just for annual members, basically. So if you want, to, if you're part of the community, you want to be a part of the community. You've had your first year, you're really getting value from it, and you're like, right, I know I'm going to be here another year. Actually, so this has been around 13 years, by the way. So it's not going anywhere. I promise you. I expect to run this for at least the next minimum another decade you know i'd be 50 by that point maybe i'd want to do something else but um if you want to commit to another year and you want to save 50 pounds um get just just upgrade to an annual membership you'll be you know it's done all at once you don't have the monthly outgoing then um and you'll get that that database the thing is it gets updated every month uh, well, every sort of month, every two months. Um, so you're always going to want to have... It's not something you could download once and then that's going to be it. You, the reason we give it to people who are there for a year is because we wanted to have access to it for the full year because it will. things can change really quickly. The BBC casting department's changed so much. Um, recently, people have left. If you'd have downloaded it in December, it would be out of date already. Um, so, you know, that's why it's one of, you know, it's, it's a resource for members who are going to be here long term. But definitely um, consider it 100%. Uh, let's have a look. Uh, da, 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 da. Uh, if you're doing workshops, then I'm in. It says trio. Just don't know when. Don't know when they're going to be. We maybe we'll maybe do them at um, at some point. Um, but there we go. But yeah, I think that's about it for tonight, folks. Thank you for being here. Um, who's going to join us? Just put a yes in the chat if you're joining us tomorrow night with Peter Hunt. Would love to see you there live on the call. If you can't make it, no pressure whatsoever. All the calls are recorded. Um, it will be in your members area on Wednesday afternoon. You can catch up on the recording. You can just listen to the audio only if you want to listen to it as a podcast when you're out and about. Um, but let us know if you're going to be there. I'll play the trailer again in a second. Well, the invite video again in a second. Um, to finish tonight um, but thanks for bearing with us even though my internet connection just <laughs> fell apart a minute ago thanks for still being here Nick says a big yes Lolly says yes absolutely um, I love it make sure uh, yeah Ryan's in Ryan's in it he's on it honestly it'll be, it'll be a really really good session because I've known Peter so long and he's just so legit and really open to answering any questions he'll just give you any information you want and like really tell you how you know really just say it how it is um basically so if you are looking to land auditions for hollyoaks this year it's you don't want to miss it basically um claire says gonna look at membership now nice one claire um, but like i said we I mean, try try it just you know try it for a month if you want um dig into uh you know some of the recordings in the members area as well we've got i said we've got quite a lot of parents of, of child actors um you know who just watch on behalf because they're interested in how the industry works because you know, if your child's a, an actor that's going to grow up to be an adult actor, um, then, you know, as soon as they hit 16, you know, they don't need a chaperone anymore, they're not licensing anymore, all that sort of stuff, then, you know, all this stuff is just relevant. So if they're going to be in the industry a long time, it's really beneficial now to know how the industry works so you can, you know, guide them and steer them yourself. Uh, but thank you, folks. Thank you so much for being here. Love to you all. Um, I'll play this uh, this invite video from Peter Hunt again for those people who missed it. Um, and go and watch that podcast with Matt Hall if you get a chance this week or listen to it. I'd love to know your thoughts on it. It's just a real, real, you know, decent podcast for, for actors who are just struggling sort of to be happy right now. Um, I'm really, really proud of it. So um, do check it out. Right, where's Peter? 
Here he is. Right, going to love you and leave you. Um, oh, one last thing. Tweet me about this. Tweet at Act On This TV. I would love to know your thoughts. These Monday night broadcasts, we've done nine till ten for years. I mean, literally, I've done hundreds of these every single Monday, practically for the last, I don't know, eight years. I'm, t- I'm tempted to maybe move them earlier on a Monday to maybe, I don't know, eight o'clock? 8 p.m. as opposed to 9, or maybe, I don't know, 7, half 7. We go live with our Zoom calls every week at half 7. I just want to know what people would prefer. Are these too late at 9 o'clock, or do we move them earlier? Um, Or do we keep them at 9 o'clock? Let me know. Drop me a tweet, though. Um, Let me know what your thoughts would be on that. And anyone listening on the replay, drop me a tweet, at Act On This TV. Um, Just let me know, because I just thought it might be more convenient for people if maybe they are a bit earlier. Or maybe you watch telly till nine o'clock and you like jumping on at nine o'clock i don't know but i just thought i would uh, i would ask the question because i haven't asked it in about eight years right definitely going now love to you all i'll catch you tomorrow night until then bye for now actors if you are looking to audition for and potentially land a role on hollyoaks this year you better listen up i want to invite you to our next act on this.tv live mastermind session it is taking place on tuesday the 21st of february at 7 30 p.m on zoom with this incredible guy here head of hollyoaks casting it's casting director mr peter hunt peter it's amazing to have you back as always what are we covering on tuesday night Ooh, um, I guess um, lots of new things, how the industry has continued to kind of change, how uh, our way of working is changing, and we're going back to more 50% in the room, 50% takes, giving that choice over to the actors to take some ownership of what kind of works best for them, and how sometimes emails do land on desks at the right time. Um, We're seeing someone at the moment down for a new regular that I was jogged off from an email, so sometimes those, uh, those emails do land well. They do. I'm always, always telling actors to reach out to cast directors. Honestly, we're going to, uh, going to love hearing about that. Actors, if you want to get involved in this, you want to potentially jump on camera, have a little one-to-one with Peter as well, ask a question, anything we can do to help you move your acting career forward faster, get yourself over right now to actonthis.tv forward slash live for full details of this session. And every session, we do this every single week with the biggest casting directors, agents, actors, writers, producers, the best people in telly, Peter, basically, including yourself, <laughs> obviously. And now you, you're used to this. You've done these before. I ask everybody this, why don't actors want to miss this session in particular? Oh, this is a tricky one, but I'm going to say uh, what what we do best, have a good gossip and forget that everybody's there and probably say too many home truths. But uh, let's for some real talk and something that you can actually really apply going forward in the next few months. I love it. And honestly, we will have some gossip. We'll probably have to, <laughs> probably have to like hold back a little bit. But yeah. be there. Actonthis.tv forward slash live. I'm a